Hello, my name is Jack from Painted Legion, and today we're looking again at a High Fleet Leviathan. Previously I've done a sort of grimdark version of the scheme, but this time I'll be showing you the classic version, but with a slight twist. We're getting pretty close to having a tutorial for each of the major Hive Fleets, linked to the playlist with those in the cards, and so far we've focused on army painting techniques to give you a good looking model in a reasonable amount of time. But what if you want to spend a bit more time on a character, or a model that's performed really well in a game, or maybe you want to try and win Best Painted Army? What exactly can you do to take your models to the next level? Well in this video I'll explain two of the principles I follow to make my models really stand out. And if you stick around to the end, I'll explain why maybe you shouldn't use these techniques on your models. And quickly before we start, I do commissions. If you'd like me to paint a model for you, send me a DM on Instagram or Facebook. Links to those in the description. So you can see in the background, I've started with a layer of a shabti bone over a white primer. I'm using an airbrush for speed, but you can use a normal brush here if you like. Then we're gonna mix contrast medium and volupus pink in a ratio of two to one and wash that into the details of the model, focusing on the deepest recesses and underneath the armor panels. I'm gonna leave the end of the tail without this wash to save a bit of time later. Just make sure you drag the brush along the tail towards the main body of the model to reduce any hard lines between the unwashed parts of the model and the washed part. Then we'll do a heavy dry brush of a shabdi bone so that we reinforce that bone colored flesh on the raised details and only have the pink in the recesses. And to finish off the flesh, we'll do a much lighter dry brush of screaming skull on the raised details. This brings us to the first technique we're gonna use to make our models really stand out. Contrast. And not contrast paint, but contrast in its original sense. We'll split this into two types of contrast. So first, contrast of color, which we'll use here, and contrast of volume, which I'll talk about a bit later. So contrast of color is when we have two parts of the model that are very different colors, helping to visually break up different parts of the model so it doesn't look too homogenous. This doesn't mean you can't have a model that's mainly one color. It just means you need to find creative ways to break up that color. For my custom Space Marine chapter, I painted them almost completely white. Now the model risks looking a bit boring by being done in all in one color. And the way that many people break up a single main color on a Space Marine is by adding smaller details, like painting the trim a different color, painting the belt in brown or black, or by adding more pouches around the waist. I've done neither of these with my models and instead sculpted tabards onto each model and painted it in a really vibrant blue color. This works to break up that white around the bottom half of the miniature. And because I've used white, which is technically a shade, I'm also able to use a strong red brown color on the base without it looking too busy. On this eliminator where I've not used blue on the model at all, I've instead relied on all the webbing, pouches and cloak details painted in neutral colors to give contrast against that white armor. Color contrast can also be used to highlight a specific model. For example, my Chaplin Biker, whom I've done in a sea green color to really separate him out from an army that's mostly white, blue and red. This doesn't mean that the colors need to be completely different either. A High Fleet Tiamat uses many similar hues, but instead builds contrast using different shades of that color. And there's a limit to the amount of contrast you can have on a model. Too much contrast can make a model look really busy or unappealing. And this usually comes down to taste. In my case, I believe I've pushed the color contrast on this Neurothrope too far. And there's something to me that looks not quite right about it. I suspect I've used the primary colors red, blue, and yellow a bit too liberally, but let me know what you think in the comments. To summarize, I'm essentially saying we're gonna paint more of the details on our models, but we'll do it in a way that strategically breaks up areas of the model that are painted in one way. To use some more Tyranny examples on High Fleet Ouroboros, the blue flesh and black carapace have fairly low contrast, so we can use high contrast colors on the gun, hooves, and the claws. I've broken up the blue flesh a bit by painting the vents, but for this scheme, I could paint the joints of the model the same color as the vents to break up that blue a bit more. High Fleet Typhon is a good example of this too. We have similar hues on the flesh, carapace, and gun of the model, so we can, in moderation, paint some details with higher contrast colors to add visual interest. And on High Fleet C2, we have very high contrast between the carapace and the flesh. So to break up that black of the flesh, we've used darker shades of reds. Naturally, painting High Fleet Typhon takes about twice as long as painting High Fleet Ouroboros because of those extra details. But when you're looking at a miniature up close, it makes all the difference. And getting back to High Fleet Leviathan, the contrast between the flesh and the carapace is going to be quite high. So we're gonna use the same color we used in the recesses of the flesh, Volupus Pink, on the vents and the joints. But instead we're gonna paint it in neat so that we get a darker shade than what we have on the model already. With that done, we're gonna make sure we have good definition between the remaining details by painting them in black. This would be the chitin, the teeth, the talons, the hoofs, and the claws. And next we're gonna paint the chitin. I'm gonna use Heavy Metal's recipe of two parts Nagaroth Knight to three parts Scream of Pink, which is the larger paint mixture here. I've added some other out of the pot colors onto my palette so you can see how the mixture compares. We have Scream of Pink, Nagroth Knight, Barracknar Burgundy, and Galvor Backred. 
the closest color match to this mixture is Barrack Nard Burgundy. So if you don't want to mix your paint like I've done, use this instead. We're going to paint that all over the Termagant Chitin, but not the Chitin on the gun. We'll do that a different color later. You'll need two thin coats of this to get a good finish over that black. Now we can talk about contrast of volume. With contrast of color, we discussed how we can make a model look more interesting by picking out details. But with contrast of volume, we'll add interest to those specific details using highlights and shading, where volume is essentially the difference between our brightest highlight and our darkest shade. On the screen are some of the models where I push the difference in volume to create visual interest. On Tyranids, the best place for us to do this is on the carapace, where we use a feathering technique to not only highlight, but to add texture. By the way, if you like the look of the models on the screen, these are the next few Tyranid tutorials I'll be doing, so subscribe if you don't want to miss out on those. We do need to be careful with these drastic changes in volume. If we're too heavy-handed with them, we'll completely change how the color reads. Here's an example of models I've painted with the same colors, but the model on the left has three highlighting steps, whereas the model on the right only has one. As you can see, the chitin almost looks like a completely different color because of it. So for Tyranids that for the most part need to look similar to one another, we'll need to be very subtle about how we add that contrast. When we do this step, we'll need a brush with a very good tip and a steady hand. For the model, we're gonna push the bottom end of that volume by shading the chitin with Black Templar. This will add definition to each of those plates. And next, I'll highlight the chitin using Screamer Pink, using a feathering technique that draws lots of lines of different length. To do this, we're gonna hold our brush somewhere between 45 degrees and perpendicular to the model and draw quick lines along the edge of the chitin. I've drawn a diagram here for how these lines should look. If your lines are coming out too thick, then you need to make sure that you don't have too much paint on your brush. I usually use the paint neat from the pot and draw the excess paint off onto my thumbnail. But if you have a slightly older paint pot, then you may need to mix in a little bit of water onto a palette. With that done, we can see the contrast between the highlight and the base isn't actually that high, but this will give us a steady transition into the next color so the jump in contrast isn't too stark. For the next highlight, we'll use a mix of Decala Lilac and Screamer Pink mixed in a ratio of two to one. If you don't want to mix that, then Jean Steeler Purple is a very close color match. We're gonna use that same feathering motion, but we're gonna be a bit more conservative and instead place those lines in regular intervals with some spacing between each line. I've updated this diagram in red to show how we're placing these highlights. We're focusing on the corners of the chitin, chips in the chitin, or where we place particularly long lines of Screamer Pink. For the last highlight, you can use pure decolor lilac, but I'm gonna push the contrast even further by mixing in some white into it in a ratio two to one lilac to white. With this, we're just gonna put very small dots of this at the base of our previous highlights. And I've updated the diagram again with green areas to show where we're placing this last color. If we go too heavy on this part, it'll change the way the color reads too drastically and may make the jump in volume look a bit strange. Less is definitely more, so we'll add a few dots here and there, check to see how the model looks at a distance, and then add more if need be. After that, we're gonna paint the black details. First with a highlight of Thunderhawk Blue, deciding to either use the feathering technique again on the hooves and the gun chitin, or for something like the talons, I just use simple edge highlighting. Then I'll add a final highlight of Fenrisian Gray using the same technique on each of the different parts, as I've just mentioned. Now we can talk about our final technique, picking a unique detail and making it stand out. Every model has a detail that makes it unique to other models. Even the lowly termagant has a flesh borer that we can add a bit of detail to. So for this model, we'll do a color transition by using layers of paint mixed with contrast medium. Starting with Cadian Flesh Tone, mix one to one with contrast medium. I'll pick one end of the gun that I want to be the darkest and paint my brush towards that point. In this case, I've chosen the end of the gun and the bottom of the magazine to be the darkest. I'll use two or three layers, each one starting a little further up the gun to build that gradient from a shabti bone. Then we'll do the same thing again with Bugman's Glow. Again, mix one to one with contrast medium, and this time we'll work our way even further up the gun. And finally, I'll edge highlight the gun using a shabti bone. And then I'll also use that color on the eyes to give us a base for the next few colors. Now I'll put up the paints I use for the teeth and the eyes on the screen as I paint them in the background, while we discuss why you maybe don't want to use the techniques from this video. Tyranids are a perfect example on why you might not want your models to stand out too much. The Nids are a horde army that are supposed to look like a tide of flesh and chitin running over the battlefield. And while there are some unique monsters in the army, they look best when they sort of blend in with the models around them. So while you can still pick out details on your Tyranids, make sure that they still fit in with the rest of your army. On the other hand, a horde army like the Orc are a perfect example of an army where thematically, you may actually want each model to look slightly different from the other. Use these techniques in a way that makes sense for the theme of your army and the background of your army. And most of all, have fun with the process. So that's our High Fleet Leviathan model done. I hope this video has given you a better idea of why we paint certain details on our models, and it's given you some ideas on how you'll make your favorite models stand out. 
If you'd like to see more Tyranid tutorials, there's a playlist for those on the right. DM me on Instagram or Facebook for commissions. Links to those in the description. And thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.